What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Zuniga Films Podcast. In this episode, I have with me Jacob Owens. He's a director, editor, DP, adventurer, and entrepreneur. Jacob shares how he got his start in filmmaking at a young age, how he grew buff nerds into a successful production business, to working with artists and brands such as Kyle, Futuristic, Arizona State Athletics, the NFL Network, and many more. So without further ado, Jacob Owens. All right, Jacob, thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. So um, I just want to start off with, um, you know, fitness. I mean, I've I've been following you for a while now. I've been seeing what you're doing, how you've been growing and progressing as a filmmaker and entrepreneur. And uh, I know fitness and health has been a big part of that as well. So when did you start getting into fitness? I got into fitness super early because my dad, when we were little kids, he would pay us a penny a push up. So we'd uh-huh. be we'd be little kids doing, you know, push ups for pennies and we'd rack up like three hundred push ups in a day to get three dollars. And so like every day we were we we're just running around the house doing push ups. And so like early on I just it I think that just that positive reinforcement amongst like working out or like getting fit like seeing the benefits of like being strong because i'd go to school and little you know all the kids would be like jake has so much muscles and like (laughs) so it's like i'm getting paid like the people would notice it like i don't know i just created that i think you know uh that positive reinforcement towards it and like i was just already into sports anyways my dad was a d1 basketball player like so just kind of went hand in hand and it's always been like a big big part of my life and and you know yeah it's just it's important to me for sure nice and i guess you know that kind of gave you like that work ethic as well i'm sure yeah because i mean you got to be dedicated you got to work hard like you to you can't just slack off and expect results and i mean I, I think the same thing goes in life like or any kind of work it you know it doesn't have to be your physical fitness but it could be your job if you slack off and don't work hard like you're not gonna really go anywhere so it's like it's very there's a lot of parallels there and, and uh you know, with, with working out and just, you know, anything in your everyday life for sure. Yeah, definitely. So your start as a filmmaker, were you always into, you know, making videos earlier on? How did that kind of start? Always into making videos. My parents had this, uh, Sony, I don't, I wish I had it here. It's back in LA, this, uh, little Sony, you know, high eight tape camera. And I would run around like with my, at my brother at my house, just shooting, all kinds of like we take our hot wheels cars and like pretend like we were making like a fast and furious movie we'd record (laughs) ourselves in front of our video games playing in the background like our sports video games and we'd make our own espn show we'd film our own little monster movie Uh, like literally i just filmed anything and everything all the time with that camera and so i mean because just in general i was just a really creative kid i was always drawing my i I drew and designed my own golf course. I drew and designed my own, you know, shoe, like a shoe line. I was making board games and getting them laminated. I it was painting. I was always doing like some arts and crafts. I created like two or three different card games and had those lamp. Like I was just, I made a magazine for our, our, the kids in the neighborhood because we always played like wiffle ball and basketball and we'd keep track of stats and I made a magazine that like, did little articles i wrote little articles on each kid and like their stats and so i was literally just always creating something and i think you know a big part the the big chunk of that was always like having a camera around too and so um i just yeah i don't know it's something i've always done and and then kind of in high school is when i kind of first realized like oh like i could this could be a job. Like this could be what I do. Like it was just something I like to do. You know, it was never, you know, I was never a little kid like, Oh, I want to make movies one day. I want to be a, you know, a director. It was just, I liked picking up the camera. So, so just filming anything and everything. Dude, every, my hamster, I had a pet hamster and we built a little Lincoln log town and (laughs) I filmed him. I would just film him running through the Lincoln for like, for no reason. I would just, I would film it. You know what I mean? So the camera was pretty much always attached to my hand um that's awesome from an early age and my parents it's not like they put it there i just i picked it up and just, just was shooting for whatever reason yeah so it was just natural pretty much pretty yeah much. yeah I th- well i think like going back to it, i liked i liked just creating things and so that was another you know with all those different all those things i mentioned those are all different forms of like art and creation and 
you know, I just happen to probably pick up on the, the, the videos or like the video stuff a lot more, but I was still always like all facets of, of art before I wanted to even do video. I wanted to be a professional cartoon artist. Cause like I was a really good drawer mm-hmm. and, uh, I would just draw all the time. And, uh, like early on I was like, oh, I'm going to become like, I want to be like, I want to do the lion King. Like I want to be the guys that draw those movies. And uh, that didn't happen because f- film took over. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, that's, like I said, art, you know, art was always a big part of my life. All forms. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that all kind of like meshes together. I mean, the drawing portion, the video portion, the creativity, it all kind of like formed, I guess, to where your your path kind of led you pretty much, right? Yeah. So did you go to, uh, did you go to film school? I went to film school at ASU in Tempe, Arizona. Uh <laughs> It was a it was a unique experience. It was fun, uh, kind of. Not really. <laughs> Why so? It's just I didn't. Man, I just did not connect with the teachers there because it was like right around that time I I kind of started getting into like music videos on YouTube and like running around like and shooting like music videos and putting them up. So I was like kind of ditching class, not ditching class, but missing some class to go like shoot these music videos. And I was getting paid, like paid. I was only getting paid like 200 bucks, but it was something. And I was like, yo, I'm like, I didn't, I come to film school to like make this my job. And now I'm kind of out here doing, so I just would like miss class and not really follow the curriculum a hundred percent. Cause we, you're supposed to make like a final film for your junior, your uh, senior thesis and whatnot. And the alternative was to like make three music videos. And I was like, shoot, I'm making music videos right now. I'll just turn those in. Right. And uh, they, I was the only one that did that out of 30 kids. And so like just the teachers there just, I, I, they would like call me out in class and say, and now we come to Jake who we know is not like, it was just, it was not, oh, a, it was kind of lame. And, and a lot of the kids, a lot of the kids, like I'm just a mutt, like, naturally especially more then than i am now but i was just such a also kind of a jock and sports head and like i just you know the majority of i would say film people are a slightly or on more slightly on the maybe nerdier side and not athletes like i could have gone and played college ball you know what i mean and so i don't think i think i just didn't i didn't mesh with them all too well i i had some friends in the class for sure like they're I'm not saying I was just a complete loner, but I just feel like overall, um, I, I felt like my teachers even like kind of felt that way too. You know what I mean? It's like, who is this? Like he's, he's not a real film kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so my, my film school experience was just a little, a little different, a little unique, but Hey, it all, it all worked out. So. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting that you said that, you know, like you felt like you weren't fitting in with like tr- the traditional film school thing. And I'm sure that's what inspired buff nerds later on right yeah and i want to get into that later on but um while we're still on the topic of film school now that you're out of it you've experienced it was it worth it what are the pros and cons the it just honestly depends on the film school you go to like the film school Mm -hmm. i went to not worth it like if you're going to go to a school that's more highly touted to where you can make those connections because honestly i think film school where the value in film school is is the connections you make because a lot of people i know that went to like a a premier film school or somewhere um that's a little better is the connections they made from that and and have worked their way into the industry immediately or down the road because of the the friendships they made or the connections with those people. Um, whereas my film school in, in Arizona where there's not really a film scene and it was a very like entry level film school that was only like three years old. And the best camera they had at the time was a five D Mark two. Like they didn't let you, sh- there, that was the best camera they had. That was their cinema camera. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, that wasn't worth it, but I'm not saying film school isn't worth it. I, I think it's just, it's gotta be the right one. You know what I mean? Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so after you graduated, did you move right away to LA? Probably like six months, six months after I graduated. Let's see. I graduated 2012 and I moved out there in 2013. So somewhere, but I graduated in the fall of 2012. So yeah, within six months after graduating in the fall, um, I moved out, I think, I can't remember exactly, but it was 2000, 2013. So I moved out when I was 12. 
23 I moved out there but it was crazy okay. I'd never never lived more than five minutes from home because uh, ASU is right down the street from my parents house and mm-hmm. I went to you know when I lived there on campus you know I was only five minutes I, I was home all the time and then my yeah. last two years my junior senior year I just went I went back home and because I had my college experience for two years I was like all right I'm cool right. like and I wasn't a partier anyway so then I went back home for the last two years and and so yeah my whole life never lived far from home or anything like that and so it was quite the shock to uh go to LA all by myself for sure but I knew I knew it's like what I needed to do and uh you know if I wanted to like really make it a career for myself for sure right so like how how was that how's that process because I know there's a lot of people that are like on one side of the country they want to move out to LA or like vice versa how was that were you fearful it's oh yeah for sure I remember calling my mom like probably a weekend they helped me move out and then they left but I was like a weekend it's by myself up in my loft like I had a sweet spot but still it was it was lonely by yourself like mm-hmm. not too many friends in LA I knew like a couple people in LA but even in LA you're not they're not you're not close if you're in LA it doesn't mean you're close like like you, someone could be 10 miles away and be 40 minutes away you know what I mean right. so yeah. uh, I felt pretty alone and I remember calling her one night and just being like I think I made a mistake well and she was just like just tough it out and I was just having a moment of just like you know because it's a new place all by myself like you know it's, it's crazy it was kind of like me stepping out into the the real world for the first time on my own and um, but no I stuck it out and things turned quickly and, and everything was fine and went really well so um, yeah I had a rough like one or two weeks at the beginning but after that it was it was cool it was, it was fine but yeah i mean if you, ultimately like if you i know a lot of people who have gone out there from you know whatever state they're from and i've seen amazing success and i've also know people who have like come from far and like it didn't really work out and they've left so um yeah i've seen i've seen both sides to it so was there something like when you were there, I know you were there two weeks and then you started moving up and up and up. Um, was there a point in time where you're like, okay, I can, this, I'm here to stay. This is working. Well, I knew, I knew I was always there to stay. Like I, like there was never, I just couldn't see myself being back in Arizona and like not have giving it like a full, full shot or chance. So it wasn't, like an option to go back but yeah like I said after the first it was probably like a month in it would just things were like going crazy all of a sudden I edited like a T-Pain video I was on set of an Akon video I was helping to shoot this like uh, Black Eyed Peas video all this stuff happened so fast like on like the third week or something and that's when I was like oh everything's good like we'll be straight (laughs) so yeah Yeah. um and I was already doing fine then anyways it's not like I was struggling it was it was more like the mental struggle of being there by myself and like you know um just well you know will this will I be able to do this like by myself kind of thing but then you start to meet people and you you get busy and you're working and, and everything was cool so yeah yeah but yeah, that, that, I mean, like, just like any, if you were to like move to freaking New York right now by yourself, it'd, it'd be a scary thing. You know what I mean? Right. Like any, anytime something's new and you have a change in your life, you know, regardless of how small or big, it'd be a little scary. So, <laughs> yeah. I think the good thing is like you were pretty much dead set on like what you wanted to do. And once you had that, like everything will fall into place. Yeah, I mean, there was no other alternative to me. It was for, or for me. It's not like I had a backup plan. Like, oh, you know, if if film doesn't go well, like I'll be like a personal trainer or something. Like I could do that. Like it was, I'd never wanted to be a personal. Like it was always I want to do film and that's it. Like so, I was gonna do what it took to do that. Like I feel like if you have a backup plan like that or like in the back of your head, like oh, if it doesn't work out, like I I'll do this or you start you start setting yourself up for failure because you're not. <laughs> you're not all in you have to go all in especially early on um or really at any point in your life like if you want to go at go after something go all in because that's what you got to do and um but yeah um yeah never there was never any doubt as far as like ah this is not what i'm going to do i'm i might go do this instead or you know so yeah yeah and i think that's the key like going all in you know because like 
like you said, you know, if you have one foot in one thing you want to do and then one foot in the other, you're never going to get anywhere. Right, right. It's kind of like even just on a daily basis thing, like, you know, a lot of people will be like, yo, how are you so productive? It's because like, like this, you know, the I'll have a list of things to do and I just go ham on that one thing until it's done and move on to the next thing. And you'll have a lot of people who like kind of wishy-washy between a bunch of things. They'll kind of work on this thing a little bit and, and then they like might break and come over here and do this thing. And it's like the more you start to spread yourself thin like that, the less you're going to get done. Um, so you just got to go hard on that thing until it's done and then on to the next thing. So it's kind of the same thing applies kind of just in like a daily to do list kind of activity life for sure. Right. That makes sense. So like when you were starting um, filming videos, um, I think one of your earliest ones that you had on YouTube was with uh, the group CMG. Oh, my God. You, you yeah. were filming with the Canon T2i. Yeah. 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 But but. um futuristic which you would start working later on with right was part of that group right no no you're talking wait you said cmg cmg yeah i could be incorrect no i think you're right that was the beach beach cruising is that yeah you're talking about? that's the one yeah 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 so no I, I mean i was shooting with futuristic a lot and that group hit up futuristic and we did they zach as i know him, futuristic was a feature on that song and we mm-hmm. did it and we did a video to it yeah out and that was my like first time out in uh like la like as a an, an adult because i think i was still in college but i was because we used to go to california when i was little kids with our family all the time uh-huh. and stuff but that was like the first time i had been there in like five years by myself with my homie going out there to like on a work trip to shoot a music video yeah. on a t2i like it was funny it was, <laughs> it, i look back now just like oh my gosh it's so bad but i remember watching that video with my homie after i edited it and we're like damn this is so tight like bro we're so you know like hype and so no that's cool it's cool looking back and seeing those things and seeing how far you come and just thinking like how how good you thought you were then and like you look back and it's like dang man it came came a long way it's like so is it like what what did you learn from that shoot because like you know for everyone like an earlier shoot you look back you kind of cringe a little bit but I'm sure you learned something from that like what was one thing you took out of that um that if you try and film on a bike path, you're going to get a lot of people yelling at you. <laughs> Bikers are crazy, man. You can't go. It, I remember one time we were shooting this music video and I think it was Laguna and we had a permit for the whole like beach mm-hmm. sidewalk parking lot. Like we permitted it out and we coned it off and everything. And bikers were still coming through the bike thing, honking and yelling at us. Get out of the way. We're like, we have a permit bro like you can't be here like you're illegally here right now like and it's and they're yeah they're just always crazy so bike yeah that's that's what i took away from that bikers are crazy (laughs) no but yeah anything for the shot you know yeah yeah you gotta do what you gotta do for the shot for sure we did something like that i was like hanging off the back of this little bike thing as my friend was driving me and i was like squeezing on the back trying to balance recording them riding their bikes so yeah and it was you know grinding grinding hard back then yeah that's all it is and i'm sure you did some work for free earlier on i mean like with when you were working with uh futuristic and kyle did you do like just video work with them earlier on all their stuff kyle and futuristic were all their videos for free they didn't pay me a single thing um, cause I was trying to grow my reel. I was trying to shoot videos so I could reach out to other artists and get paid there. Then they, they were just good friends. So it was hard early on to be like, yo bro, like throw me some bread and, and whatnot. And, and all their right. videos would go on my YouTube channel anyways. And I started seeing some monetization from that, um, after a while. And, and then as a result of like shooting their videos for free, I would get that money from YouTube. So it all worked out. And, uh, cause if I would have been early on, like, yo, I'm not going to shoot your video unless you pay me. Like who knows if, you know, where we'd all be. You right. Know? So, right. And I think that's like the, the thing, a lot of like young filmmakers, kind of get skewed a little bit um they go with the money first instead of building their portfolio and just shooting stuff for free i was never doing that i was i was hitting people up asking them to to shoot their videos like for free like like 
I would remember this one guy I reached out to who's now one of my best friends, David Morris, DY. At the time, he was shooting all his videos with the guy that did Mac Miller's videos, which his name was Rex Arrow. And I just remember like being like, oh, I want to shoot for him. Like, that'd be tight. So I sent him the reel I had with like, you know, all my stuff from like Kyle, Futuristic, Sam King, Samson, all these artists I'd shot for. And I was like, yo, I could shoot you a better video than what you're getting now for way less money. And he hit me up. And next thing you know, two weeks later, he was flying out to Arizona to shoot our first video. And from then on, I've shot all his videos. And now we're like best friends. Um, awesome. And he'll definitely, he'll be a best man. Or I don't know, best man. Yeah, best man in the wedding. Or uh, like groomsman. There we go. He'll be a groomsman yeah, yeah. in the wedding. Nice. So... Uh, but yeah, I hit him up and he flew out to Arizona. I think he paid me like 150 bucks. That's it. And we did like a two, three day shoot. Like it gets, I was just doing it cause I wanted to reach a, 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 another higher rung on the ladder. And I saw him as that opportunity and, and it worked cause ne- after we dropped that video, a bigger artist who was like above him saw that video and reached out to me and wanted me to do his video. And then all of a sudden I got paid off that video. So it's just, you know, you got it's stuff you got to do. You got to pay your dues, put in work, sometimes do things to – it's like people still – like big big time people will do spec commercial work and that's on speculate. You're doing it for free out of your own pocket on speculation that this company or brand might pick it up and pay for it or you, you use it as your own – you know, way to build your commercial reel so that you could try and pitch yourself to brand. So it's like people on a big level do it too, not even just like starting out. So, I mean, shoot, I, I still do it. Like I'll shoot my own stuff, pay for it, do it for free on, you know, in the hopes of it trying to get me to another rung on that ladder. So it, it never ends. It never ends. Um, but, but yeah, so some, some, I think that's overlooked a little bit, especially in today's social media craze driven youth um mm-hmm. you know because they just see all this seemingly instant success and money and stuff and they're like oh i i, I need to get paid like if i'm gonna shoot this like so because that wasn't around that wasn't around when i was just starting you know instagram was just came on the scene and it was the only a place you just posted your person it was like it's a business now you know what i mean and yeah it wasn't that way at all when i you know had first started shooting videos so yeah so i mean things evolve you know that's that's the way it is but definitely for sure like the passion project side um i was i was actually speaking with brian in the in the last episode and we were talking about passion projects and just the importance of like you said going out filming it and adding that to your portfolio is very important right and you never know what it could lead to you never know some some could pop up and uh yeah, just you, you just never know. So it's, it's and it's good just for your creative mind and juices to to get away from people telling you how it should be done or whatever, and just doing it how you would want to do it. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, creating exactly. creating how you would want to create with no one no one in your ear of like nah, like you need to change this. It's like that's the worst. Like when you're doing a music video and you love it and you're all this stuff and you're like, nah, take this out, that, that. And we don't like those, that color and effects and get rid of this. And you're just like, what is this now? This is, I don't, and so it's just, yeah, it's uh, you, you need to do passion projects for those reasons and just for your own creative sanity. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense. Um, and I know you are also an entrepreneur um, because when it comes to the video production space, a lot of people are just like, okay, I want to be d- strictly a director. I want to be strictly a DP or whatever else. But you've built an actual business. Um, and, you know, part of this podcast, you know, I like to integrate the entrepreneurship side and the business side, and you really emulate that. So Buff Nerds is your company. How did that start? Well, it started just as my YouTube channel. I was I needed a place to put those music videos I was shooting in college. And I was like, I got locked out of my old YouTube account. And I was like, dang, I need a new YouTube. And uh, I was like, I don't want to just name it my name, like Jacob Owens. I was like, I want a cool name. And I was just kind of like, what's unique about me? Like, what could I say? And I'm like, well, I'm like a an athlete who's like buff. But I'm like a film dude who makes videos. And I'm kind of a nerd in that sense. So I'm a buff nerd and then that's just kind of where it started as a youtube channel and then it grew into like that being my production company 
and and just my nickname people knowing me as that like i'll be out in public or someone will be like buff nerd like so <laughs> it's just kind of a myriad of things but um yeah now it's that's my production company buff nerds media youtube channel all that yeah nice and so you were obviously started out as like solo shooting solo but eventually since now you're running a company building the team is important how did you start building your team I man just it's just along the way when you meet the right people and you just know like hey I, I need to connect this dude and work with him consistently and like he'd be a great and you just start to develop those relationships and kind of having um you know those go-to people that like when a project comes up you just know like i'm hitting up that guy that guy that you know what i mean it's just along the way it just happens like you know I, i'll get messages like yo how do you so how do you find people to work with and build a team i was like you just it just kind of happens you just you work on a bunch of stuff and you'll meet the right person and then that person just kind of becomes squad you know what i mean mm-hmm. like and same well like at, even to this day as projects come up I, I still find new people that i bring in like yo you're gonna be doing this from now on like whenever i have a shoot and they're like down you know so it just happens over time it's just with experience like just on different sets projects you'll, you'll meet the right people you can't just when you meet the right people, you'll know. You can't just like go out and search for a team. That's just not how it works because you have to vibe right and you'll know when you're on set like, oh, yeah, I got along with that guy really well. We were in sync. Like he's going to be like a, a good team member I could go to. But you can't just like be on the Internet like, oh, I'm going to find a guy who can be part of my team. It just doesn't it just doesn't really work like that. Right. You know? Yeah. So also with your YouTube channel um and building that up right um you put out a lot of free content building the content things like that um and that's very important but why did you decide to consistently do that again i just like creating stuff like even though like honestly youtube used to be like a huge source of income for me now it's not anymore but I just like creating. I like sharing that information. I like putting out content of what I'm doing, like in my life, like not like vlog stuff. I don't do that, but like, you know, behind the scenes of this film, like, okay, I'm working on a, this TV show. I want people to see that over here, you know? And that's like a YouTube's, a, my YouTube's a spot where they can go check that out more in depth than Instagram. Instagram's a minute. So it's like, I've just always maintained my YouTube channel because it's just, I like creating stuff when I, have downtime between projects i'll work on something for youtube and put it out keeps me bu- keeps me busy keeps me going helps mm-hmm. build the brand helps build the business as well keep that just you know name out there so i don't know i just i i like doing it and and it's a part of you know i would hate to see it just go go away you know just because right. i'm not getting paid off of it like i used to like it's still like that's that's how i came up like was on youtube like so i don't want that i don't want it to go anywhere you know so i'll I'll always you know for as long as i can try and try and make content for youtube yeah and i think it's good because like you said it helps build the brand but you're also helping build the community as well um what goes i mean do you have one tip on like how to build a successful brand yeah i mean (sighs) It's funny. I have a, I actually have a guide of like how to build a brand because I've, I've done it several times with several, Uh several different, you know, myself as a brand, buff nerds as a brand, tropic color as a brand. Um, I've done it quite a bit, but the, the, what is like a good tip for building a brand? It's, it's just gotta be something that's kind of like you know, memorable or sticks with you. Like, like buff nerds, it sticks with you. Like when you hear like, Oh, buff nerds, like it's just kind of unique. Um, and then, you know, capitalizing off that, it's like, okay, buff nerds, like, what does that mean? And then all the content you produce around that, you know, make it relate to that. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like when I do fitness stuff or when I do camera stuff, I'll be like, you know, running around, um, like pretending like I'm using a gimbal with a 45 pound plate and it's like that feeds into that brand. People find it funny. Then it goes, people go check out my work. So it's like finding something that's unique and stands out. That's, you know, different than everything else out there. And then like creating content that's like really geared towards it. Um, I think, yeah, is is a 
and just being consistent. You know, you, right. you can't build a brand without being consistent because even some of the most successful brands out there at some point or companies go under or tank because they're not constantly, you know, updating or innovating and they let the brand slide and it, it, mm-hmm. then they're, then the next thing you know, like, you know, like how big was Kmart for the longest time? Kmart was freaking huge. You don't see, at least out here on the West Coast, you don't see them anymore. They're just yeah. all, they're just all gone. So, um, yeah, you just got to always be, always be consistent and, you know, adjusting with the times as well too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And one of, one of the videos that I actually uh, thought was pretty funny, how you meshed like the, like the um, fitness side and like the film side was like on your uh, Instagram and you were just hitting the the heavy bag on the ground. And <laughs> I forgot, I forgot what the, the captions were for like the bag, but well, I had final or um, Adobe Premiere like above my head hitting the bag, and then I had Final Cut be- like attached to the bag below. So it was like Adobe Premiere was like beating up on Final Cut, and yeah, uh, yeah, it, went, it, it did pretty well. It was just some rant, like it wasn't even really a planned thing. I was just out there hitting, like hitting that bag, and I was like, yeah. yo, like it just the thought kind of randomly popped into my head of like. Adobe Premiere smashing Final Cut, and I was like, "Oh, that'd be a kind of, kind of a funny video." So I just grabbed my phone and put it up and recorded. So yeah, but yeah, that, again, going back to that's geared towards like my brand. You know what I mean? Like taking yeah. filmmaking and fitness and and creating content around that and putting it out there. So right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was pretty funny, but um, also uh, still on the business side, I know that you started. Tropic Color and the Prism Lens FX, right? And those are pretty much different revenue streams that are coming in for your business. Um, But when it comes to starting a business, um, it's basically solving a problem. So what was the problem that... I don't say that, but that's Uh that's right. That's right. It's solving Uh a problem. I always say finding a gap and filling filling that gap. You know what I mean? Like... um, but yeah, same, same thing, same, you know, same, same difference. But yeah, for me, it was with Tropic Color where it started is I always, I've always colored my own work. And so I already developed like my own LUTs and was selling those. And then my homie was just like, yo, I want to do like a LUT. He's a cut, like a DP colorist. And he's like, I would love to do like a LUT pack with you. Cause he, you know, saw that I was doing that. And I was like, well, I already have like so many, like, I don't, I don't want to do that. But I was like, I've been thinking about like some other like filmmaking products like you know that i would potentially like to do and uh how, the original one was like some lens flares and stuff because there had been a company i don't remember the company name that i'd bought like a pack from and it was like i think it was like 150 200 somewhere in there and i just remember using the like the lens flares going like man i could make something better than this like and i i, I bet i could i'll make it cheaper and so that I always kind of had that thought. And so when he said that, I was like, yo, what if we just started a separate company and we do like all these like post-production assets? We, I was like, we can have LUTs too, but we can have all these other things that are honestly better and more professional than what's out there and at a lower cost because you you have a lot of high school kids and college kids and who you know especially with filmmaking gear getting cheaper and cheaper or more the cost barrier to entry being so much lower and kids are 13 years old now with you know better cameras than i had at 20 or whatever and they're running around shooting stuff not all these kids have 200 dollars just lying around to throw to lens flares like it's just you know it's just not a thing and so i was kind of like i wanted to basically I just read like did a little bit of research. There was a couple companies that did that sort of like, you know, film grain, lens flares. Some did some of those, some only did at certain ones, but they're all friggin' so expensive. Like this one company, they sold 35 millimeter film grain. I think it was like two hundred dollars for the pack. I was just like, gosh, that's that's nuts. And so I was like, it just kind of started from there and we started with some LUTs and like one uh flare anamorphic flare pack that we had built out and then added some like other products with you know some film burns and we figured out you know well 
we knew that you know on the beginning roll and tail roll of each film strip if you expose it to light you get that burn and then we get them digitally scanned and created assets and we started doing that and then we did other things like treatment templates location guides like just all sorts of different like stuff i know i've used or would use on projects and that there's not like really that much good stuff out there and if it is good it's way too expensive so it was just kind of like yo we're gonna make the dopest shit but make it affordable for everyone and and it just kind of took off like it's it's done really really well and i think it's a one because it's really good but also two people can afford it and it doesn't break you know the high school kid's bank who wants to you know buy a a light effect pack to to spruce up his footage you know what i mean so because i think there's this one company lens distortions and they do a lot of the the same kind of light effects and overlays and different things we do but i think like they're packed to like buy all their stuff um i can't really remember i just remember some kid telling me it he was like, yeah, I was going to get their stuff, but it was like $1,600. He's like, and then I noticed I could get – he goes, then I noticed I could get everything on your site for like 800 900 And so I was just like, oh, dang. Like, So it's just – it goes to show like he wanted to buy it, but it was like just out of his price range. And he was just like, that's too expensive for me. And then he found our stuff and was just like, oh, this is perfect. So it's like we – I feel like we kind of break that that middle ground of like it's – professional high-end stuff but is affordable for the little guys you know not just Mm -hmm. like big big guys so so yeah right but yeah Yeah. found the gap that the gap was there of like professional quality products at an affordable affordable price point you know what i mean it was either really good stuff that was super expensive or crappy stuff that was cheap there was no like you know what i mean and so found that gap and just freaking went hard at it and then you know the rest is history so yeah and i think that's like the challenge that a lot of young filmmakers have. I mean, they want to make their videos good, but especially when it comes to video production, it's not cheap, you know, but no, a lot, I mean, all, all film stuff, it, like for a friggin' Tiffin ND filter for my matte box for my red, it's 300, $400 for a filter. It's like video stuff's not ch- cheap. You know what I mean? So whatever I can do to help, you know, you know, in that, in that regards, um, you know, and that's why I offer so many stuff on my online store, like the behind the scenes, like our basically behind the scenes of me on set directing. And so it's like because I, I had the idea one time to do like a live stream on set, but there's so much downtime. It's it just like you can't. I, I was like, what if it was like basically a live stream, but condensed to all the best parts? You know what I mean? And so like I offer that on my on my personal store where it's like. 50 minutes of raw behind the scenes footage of the the action, the talking through a scene, the directing, da 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 da. And I put it up for $5 just because, like, it's basically like, hey, donate to me and you get to have this. You know what I mean? And so, because I already offer so much free stuff on my YouTube and try and pump out as much information and, and free stuff on there. And then all that stuff's kind of just like, yo, help me out, donate a little bit, and I'll give you this content. Because if you would have told me in, in high school or college, like, yo, for $5, you can be on. On set uh, essentially and see how a film is shot or a commercial or a music video or whatever i would have been like what hell yeah sign me up you know what i mean like yeah. so i think it's just yeah i try and do a lot of stuff like that too that's just like y- you'll it's crazy how much people you'll run into that like are just shocked that i share what i share because they're just like i'll get I remember one time being on set because I answer like all my DMs. Anyone that messages me, I answer them. And like I get people all the time like, bro, I can't believe you messaged me. This is crazy. You're the only one that's ever messaged like all this stuff. And and I remember one – and I try and answer all the questions that are within reason. If you send me a giant paragraph, it's, it's going to be hard to respond to that. But like I'll get a question and I remember on set one time being like, bro, you're going to answer that? Like they were like making fun of it. I was like, yeah, he doesn't know the difference. Like I'm going to let him know. Like he was asking the difference between a frame rate or something. And they were just like scoffing at him. Like, why? You know, it's like, it's crazy. Like, and then, you know, the, the, the stuff that I share too, they're like, bro, you tell people your, your, your tips like that and all that stuff. Like people don't, people don't want to share filmmakers. It's crazy. Yeah. I was like, my DP was on set with this one director who used like this thing in front of his lens. And he was like, uh-huh. before he did it, he's like, I'm about to do this trick and you can't you can't ever tell anyone how to do this. And he was just like, okay. Like, and he did it, <laughs> he did it. And then like Tom, the, uh, the, or the next time we uh, linked up, 
he was just like uh he was like yo so this director did this trick like you want to do it i was like yeah let's do it like because it was just like it was such a like like bro you're not you don't own this you know what i mean like and and, but no people people really don't want to share tricks or tips or information or help someone become better because they're insecure about losing their job and maybe them coming up and and rising over them and i'm not worried about that there's enough work for everyone and Mm -hmm. and uh you know if i i'm still a firm believer i could tell you everything you need or want to know it's still not going to make you me like it's still not going to make you how i see things create how i'd create and so i'm not worried about you because i'm gonna i'm gonna help you in every way i can but ultimately at the end of the day i'm not worried because you're 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 just not me and you're I could tell you everything the way I do it, exactly how I do it. Your, your videos and content is still going to be different than mine. Right. So I don't know. That's just how I've always kind of been and looked at things. So. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's a big thing in like the video production space. They, and, you know, people want to keep, you know, what they do to themselves and not really share it out too much. But we all started, you know, in a spot where we didn't know anything. Yup. You know? Oh, that's exactly right. <laughs> so, so I'm glad that you're helping you know other people out for sure. Yeah, it's just paying it forward and just being. Yeah, I mean, I would have. I so wished I would have had any sort of opportunity. Like I always let people just come on set from Instagram or wherever. Like if I would have had the opportunity in in high school or college to to go on any kind of working set, like I would have. I would have paid them to go do that. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. um, so I just, yeah, I'm always kind of doing stuff like that. And it just, I'm never worried about like the information I'm sharing being, you know, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I'm not, not something I worry about. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I think that also goes on like when you're talking about your community, cause you like, you know, horror movies too. Right. And I know, and I know you had that horror movie challenge that you put out for people to kind of like create. Um, so, like, what kind of like kind of brought you to put that out as a challenge? Ah, uh, shoot, what was it? I mean, because I, I wanted to do some. I love Halloween and just obviously like horror movies in general. And I was like, I wanted like I wanted to make my own short Halloween movie, and then I kind of like mess with the idea of like yo what if i did like a little short short horror film contest and mm-hmm. uh my buddy who jj uh my, the, another company i'm involved with industry jump hit me up because he loves halloween and like horror movies mm-hmm. too and he was like bro let's let's like let me help you throw like a, the contest like i saw you say mm-hmm. something on your instagram about wanting to do that maybe and and so it's just kind of like that was the moment like all right we're gonna do this and so we just kind of partnered up and just was just making it the contest for like people on YouTube and my Instagram, like, hey guys, this is a contest. Here's the money you can win or the prizes, like, and blah blah blah. And I mean, I was honestly expecting like maybe thirty people to like do it, like, just because it's a lot to make a to make a movie of any kind of any right. length. It's yeah. it's it's a lot of work, and it just like went crazy, like over over uh, what was it? Uh, over 200 entries yeah 200 and wow. 203 so it's like and a lot of them were really good like really good like um so it was yeah it was pretty nuts to think like you know out of all you know 203 short films were made for and it, it's not like there was even a crazy prize i think the first place was 500 bucks and like mm-hmm. uh and some products from tropic color I was like the pro, you know yeah. what I mean? People were just doing it because I think of the, the 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 competition aspect, the challenge aspect, the you know desire to create something. There was a little prize attached, but it got me super juiced because like after that, I was like, yo, if if this went this well with like this little planning, this little like prize, like just kind of, it was so just last minute, like oh here yeah contest guys. I I'm excited to take it to the next level next year. And I want to like, I think it'd be cool to make it a full on down the road, like buff nerds, horror film festival. And like every year, every year have a big festival. Um, and we have like, we rent out a theater and then show the top, you know, ones. And then we whittle it down to let people know who, you know, and do like, do it like 
on a on a larger scale um but still internationally like anyone can enter uh but then also have like a, a night where it's like the film festival the top 10 films are screened and like pri- big prizes given out sponsors all this stuff like i think it'd be cool to get to get it to there so yeah and i think i think that's just it's a testament to like you know what you're doing and like the the strong engagement with the community that you're building and uh i like that idea the the festival idea that's a pretty cool idea yeah i think i think it'd be cool it'd be fun i mean it was just fun to see like so many different filmmakers with so many different like ideas stories styles and like like because i had from all the way there i mean there were some nook and crannies of the world like people like uh i remember one kid from like india filming in his little hut like made one and sent it off his phone filmed the whole thing off his phone and it was actually it was actually pretty good and then you know you know then you'd have like germany and france and then you would have obviously here in the u.s there was this all over the world and but that one in the i think it was india got me because i was like dang like this dude is in like this tiny little hut off his phone in india it's it's in subtitles like and he freaking did this challenge i was like that's tight so um yeah no it just got me super juiced to 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 build it out further and bigger especially with all the responses of people like bro this you got me off my ass to do something like i uh-huh. you know this 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 is what i needed to finally get back to making a short or or this again like so many people messaged me like like thank you so much like yeah. you know i didn't even i didn't win or anything but like just the the challenge alone got me off my ass to create and i want to thank you for that so that was another like reason i would love to do it just because seeing how much everyone like it helped other people and they appreciated it too you know so yeah i think it'd be fun i think it'd be tight so hopefully hopefully next year we can get some like big brand sponsors so we can do it like super big and have tons of like yeah. filmmaking gear prizes as well and whatnot um that'd be cool so yeah for sure and then what what so, you know since you're running your business since you're filming, I'm sure you came across some challenges along the way. Is there like a story that you have, of like something went wrong, but you found a way to overcome it? I mean, honestly, the biggest thing that's ever gone wrong is just like hard drives failing on set or like <laughs> card or cards not dumping all the footage correctly. And then we end up deleting something and have to like, then you have to like deal with the client like, yo, like that that's probably the worst or hardest thing that's ever happened yeah how do you get how do you deal with uh, with clients when that happens how do you handle that you just gotta be as like calm as possible and and just let them know it was like no one's fault sometimes technology messes up um and just like you know find a a median because it's like obviously if you have to shoot a whole nother day it's like well who's gonna foot the bill for that it was your gear that got messed up so you kind of got to come at at it with like you know we we do need to shoot another day we might need a little bit more budget but we we will take care of you know this portion of it too because you know our like you can't just like the client's not to blame you know what i mean like technically it's your responsibility so if you need to come out of pocket for it for that day or whatever you just you got to do it because at the end of the day you want to keep the client happy because they're going to potentially bring you more money whether it's them in the future or them telling you about like because after that experience and like you maybe you don't handle it well they could go and bad mouth you to so many people and then you might lose so many opportunities and jobs that you would have never even thought you could have had but you right. but you lost it because you didn't handle handle it with um you know some dignity so yeah that's true i mean you just got to face it and you know handle, yeah, it. handle it sometimes yeah. you just got to bite the bullet exactly so just a couple more questions um but it's been great so far you're providing a lot of value for sure um so why do you continue to do what you do i freaking just love it like i just i mean i i was literally thinking about that today i was just like man like today i've already edited like i edited two behind the scenes videos i touched up two of my short films i worked on some stuff a promo video for tropic color i did some stuff for prism lens effects i went to the gym i went to like i did all and i was just like man what else could i do today like i just like like i it's not like i just want to like oh i'm done for the day i'm cool like i just i'm always i think it goes back to when i was a kid i just love to freaking create all the time like it's like an addiction so i just 
I just do it because I yeah I have a lot of people like yo how do you find motivation and it's like I don't have to find it I just I just like to do it you know what I mean like there I don't need to find a motivation like oh I I I need to make some money so I can take care of my family and this and that I just like I don't need any sort of motivation to push me to to get up and work and do something I just I just want to do it you know what I mean so uh, to me it's fun to me it's not really work so I mean there is times where it feels like work for sure but. Uh, the majority of the time, I just, yeah, it's just something I love to do and will probably always love to do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you love what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work for the majority of the time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, do you have any advice um, to, I mean, from what you've learned back then from your younger self? I mean, what advice would you give to your younger self now that you've gone through all this? I t- honestly to do something that I still am not even that good at today is like just networking and connecting with people because like that's just how you get everything in life <laughs> it doesn't even matter yeah. sometimes how dope you are if you just know the right person you're on you know what I mean like it could be like that even for a director they could have directed n- nothing and they're our best homies with Chance the Rapper they do one video for Chance and they could blow up and have no other prior work you know what I mean um, and just be chances dude from here on out and then make a career off of that. And then it builds out from there, but that all stand from just him knowing the right dude and being connected and being friends. So just early on, I I'm, I'm a very reclusive person in the sense of like, I don't like to like, I don't go party. I don't go out and like to go do this. Like I like to stay home work and you know, uh, I'm just not a big, uh, yeah, like socialite, I guess. So, um, I think that would have been one thing like when I was younger to just to just do that more like connect with people more um and not be as like reclusive so yeah yeah I mean because all my biggest jobs have come off of just knowing the right person really it hasn't been like them hitting me up like hey we want you to do this job like it's just come from you know like this person who knows me or follows me is just like or that we've been homies for a little bit. It's like, yo, I got this project. You down to shoot it or you down? And I'm just like, yep, let's do it. You know what I mean? So, uh, just building, building relationships and connecting. Yeah. That's important for sure. So do you have any future plans? What's in it for, for you, for buff nerds or anything you like to Man, I take it like I, I don't I don't usually like build plans like that in my head because I feel like when you set expectations and then you don't live up to them, you get really down on yourself. So like I'll set like small goals every year of like, yo, this year I want to do this. And but I, I'm not like, yo, in five years I'm shooting. I better shoot a feature film because then if it doesn't happen, you feel like, dang, what did I do with those last five years? Did I didn't do that? You start getting down on yourself. I just kind of take things as I go. I, I, I you know, just. Um, one, you know, just one day at a time, always just working on things, staying busy. The best thing I think you can do is just stay busy. If you're not working on someone else's project, work on your own stuff or start creating stuff on your own because the more you do nothing, you, your mind starts to wander and then you become less productive because you just start, you know, thinking about things and what if this and that, you just need to like be active and, you know, create, go do something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, Um, but yeah, I mean the, the, the next thing I would love to do would eventually down the road one day direct a feature film. That would be the, that's the ultimate goal. If I had to say there's one goal in life that I have, you know, right now, uh, would be to see my name, you know, have my friends be able to go to Harkins theaters down the street and go watch a Jacob Owens film. You know what I mean? So that would be, that'd be number one goal on the, the, the bucket list right there. Yeah. Well, you're definitely on the path to do so. Hopefully, uh, hopefully in the near future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But see, it's like, again, I don't get worried if it's like, if it's not in the near future, as long as it happens, I'll be good. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like if yeah. it happens, I'll be good. There's a lot of people like, oh, I needed to like happen before I'm this age or now, or like, why, why am I not close to it now? Like I, like every, every path is different. Every life journey is different. And that's just, I'm not going to put any sort of time limit on things. I always tell people that they're like, so what's your, what's your five-year plan or whatever. I'm like, I don't have a five-year plan. Like that's stupid to put like a time limit on something like, and be, I just, I think it's dumb to put a time limit on anything. Even like, you know, even if you're talking about relationships and marriage, like, Oh, when do you want to get married by? I "I don't know when I'm ready. Like, I don't, I don't set a limit of like, Oh, I have to be married by 
twenty nine or thirty or whatever it is, like that's that's putting expectations and limitations on things. Just when I feel ready, I'll be ready. Like, you know, mm-hmm. kind of same thing with anything else. You know what I mean? So, I think it's just way way healthier to to live that way than to, you know, have this this, you know, set in stone time limit on something. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good advice to have for sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. Well, that's it. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being on. I really appreciate it. Definitely got some great value from this and hopefully all of you that are listening and watching did so too. So thank you again, Jacob. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thanks again for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll be placing Jacob's social media links in the show notes so you can stay connected. And if you got great content out of this episode and know someone that can benefit from it, please share it. So thanks again for joining in. And until next time, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.